So have you noticed your life is not quite as bright as it used to be? Back when you were young and, and, and vibrant and full of life and stuff, it just seemed like anything was possible. You had this spark about you, this, this fire that was deep within your belly that you were going to conquer the world. Well, what happened? And how do you get that fire back? We're going to be talking about that this week on episode number 186 of The Relaxed Mail. This is The Relaxed Mail, a show that comes to you each week helping men to remove the nice guy from their life so they can actually live their life on their terms. Join the host, certified coach, Brian Goodwin, as he helps men step out of their heads and become free from the thoughts that bind them. Hey man, hello and welcome to the Relaxed Mail. I am your host, Brian, and I am a certified men's coach that assists men who are just neck deep in the suffering of their life. Men who are going through a divorce or men who are just going through really rough days in their day-to-day struggle. Life can come at us fast and sometimes we become so overwhelmed that we do not know what to do next. I am Brian. I am here to help you men get to the root of what your suffering is and help you step back and look at the overall picture so that you can actually understand that you can re- st- you can relax and you can enjoy life as it happens. And today we're doing that. We're helping. I want to help you guys to start looking at life in a completely different way. And I'm looking at life instead of being the same old, same old humdrum way that you're used to looking at life. What if you could actually start looking at life with the wonder that you had back in your early twenties, back in your late teens? What if you had that zeal, that zest for life again? Now I get you. A lot of you guys are probably going to think, well, no, that's, that's impossible. I can't, I can't go back to that time. Well, I'm going to, we'll, we'll be talking about that here in a few moments and we'll see. Can, is that really true or is that you just lying to yourself so that you don't have to get uncomfortable? So but before we get into that, guys, thank you very much for coming in, listening. We're doing great here on the show. We're doing, we're still growing. We're still getting new listeners and all that. And uh, it's summer. So we're, we're, things are slowing down a little bit, which is, it's just okay. I think whenever September comes along, all of a sudden we're going to see another big jump and, and we'll start, probably start having some really good days again. But, uh, if you're, New to the show, I want to say thank you for listening and thank you for coming by and seeing what uh, this show is all about. And if you're wanting to be able to get this show uh, each and every week, or we release a show every Thursday at about, uh, about 3, 4 o'clock in the morning central time, we end up getting it out there to you. And if you want to be able to get that to your phone so you can listen to it each and every week, make sure to hit that subscribe, follow or whatever it is on your podcast app of choice. And uh, it'll start, it'll start being received every time, every time we send one out. So anyhow, I want to go ahead and get into the show where I'm fixing to be going to uh, Moyers, Oklahoma. I've got the, the operation tears of the 22. We're having our, our, our retreat for the, uh, for the year. And fix to go over there, help some wonderful vets out. And I think it's great. And if any vets are interested, if there's any vets in the Oklahoma area that want to go head down to Moyers, we're going to be over at the K River campgrounds and there's going to be four days of just great times where you've got Jeeps showing up, uh, Jeep clubs showing up. They're going to be taking f- veterans out to go climb around on the hills out there. We've got a, a four wheeler or ATV track for folks to be able to zip around in and try and see what they can do 
And then we've got the stage, and we're going to be, I'm going to be up there. I'm going to be talking. They've got a river that runs behind you, behind that. And if you want to go soak your uh, toes in the, in the water, you're more than welcome to do that. It's supposed to be a fairly warm day coming, uh, for the next four days. So you definitely be finding me down in that river. But I'm also going to be, have chances to sit down and talk with the men and women who are veterans, who are just, trying to figure out how they get back into civilian life, how they, why they feel so lost, so, so forgotten. And we're going to be talking a lot about that while we're over there at in Moyers. So if you're interested in coming over and you want to hang out with a whole bunch of veterans and just have a mental reset, then man, come on out, come to go, go on out to uh, K river campgrounds. Veterans will be able to go in free. Family members, it's a very, and when I say nominal fee, I mean, it's like at the most 20 bucks per person. So it's not anything where you're going to be breaking the bank. And if you're a veteran, you get free camping too. So, I mean, come on, man, if you're a vet, come on out, let's have a good, great time. I'd love to see you love to shake your hand and say, and, and, and see what, how I could actually help serve you even more. So now with all that said, Let's go ahead and let's jump on into the main part of the show. Can you still have wonder about life? And I'm not even going to bury the lead. I'm going to say, yes, you can. And why? That's what we're going to get into. So life can get monotonous. And I, I know I've done it. There was a period between my 30s and about 45 where life was just, yeah, it was just there. I was busted my butt to just get, you know, just to make sure ends were met. Didn't really have, I, I tried a couple things. I tried doing a, uh, a, a computer repair business. I tried a couple other things and, and that just, my heart wasn't really into it, but at the same time, I just really didn't have a clue as to what, what I was really doing. And so, yeah, I tried a few things, but eh, and I'd always promised, told myself that before my kids got out of school, I was going wanting to take them to down to a place where I used to always go and camp. My mom would take me down there and we had the greatest time. We would go tubing down in the, the Guadalupe river. And this is a place called whitewater sports. Well, it didn't dawn on me until my daughter graduated in 2018 that holy smokes, I never got to do that. I never took my kids to go camping. Why? Because I was, I had just let life carry me down the way. I was just living life year to year. I wasn't even embracing day to day. It was just taking it a year at a time. All right. It was kind of crappy. Let's try next year up. It's kind of crappy. Let's try next year up. Kind of crappy and try and never really got anywhere until I turned about 45. And that's when all of a sudden, Things started to really snap into place. And it's this five year journey that I've had so far has gotten me into a place where I start seeing what living intentionally is about and why I just let life go by. Because one of the big things we need in our life is a bit of curiosity, being curious about absolutely anything and everything. And we get, and sadly, us guys, we go off and decide, yeah, I don't need to know about that. Or you get, you're interested in it and you get learned just a little bit and you're like, all right, well, I know all I need to know about. And you don't get any more curious about it. You don't really dive in. You don't get into the fine details, the minutia, 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 my, my tongue isn't wanting to bend right. But anyhow, <laughs> we're into the deep, fine, fine details. We'll, we'll just stick with that. Um, and so <laughs> why am I not able to say that word? Minutia. Minutia. There you go. That's the word. Minutia. Minutia. Into the fine minutia of what's happening in your life or what's happening in the f lives of the people around you. And that is because life is, like I said, life is a lot like a river. And it will carry you downstream. And if you're not careful, you're not intentional. It may take you to places you don't really want to go. You have to actually start figuring out how do you steer your little, your little inner tube 
so that you can go where you want to go. If not, you're going to get yourself hung up on rocks. You're going to find yourself snarled up in, in tree branches. You're going to find yourself in places that you really don't want to be. You have to intentionally learn how to navigate that river that is called your life. And if you don't intentionally steer your, your, your life the, into the directions you want, before you know it, 20 years has passed in the blink of an eye and you have nothing really to show for it. But the cool thing is, is even as of right now, even if you're 60 years old, 70 years, 80 years old, 90 years old, you can put the brakes on you just floating down the river. You don't have to let life take over. You still have the power to decide where you want to go. How do you want to arrive at your life? How you want to be remembered when you pass? The first thing you want to do is to actually, actually notice, really notice the fact that you have been letting life slide by. Let life just run by. If you've got little kids, God bless you, man. Embrace those little ch- little kiddos. Live life. Sit there with them and watch them explore their world. There is nothing more awe-inspiring about watching a kid just going out and figuring out that r- what rough is on bark. To have them feel and to contemplate and under- try to understand what their world is by this just their sense of touch, sight, smell taste, hearing, all their senses. Ooh, it's cool. Oh, it's hot. It, oh, it's, you know, uh, it smells weird. You know, if you're out in the, out at the lake and, you know, you find the mud and the mud just, you know, kind of stinks. But, you know, that's the part of it. That's their, the, just them taking all the life is in and just to be there. And to if you were to actually just be as curious as your toddler is, you would find so much more of that's happening in life. That just will blow you away. Start asking questions. You know, a lot of times we do stuff and we're just, we may have the question of well, why in the world they do that, but we keep that question to ourselves. Why not ask them? What, are you afraid you're going to embarrass them? Well, maybe they're, maybe you're bringing them to light that, hey, they're doing stuff unintentionally too. Just ask. I mean, I had a, I was dating a girl at one time and her brother actually asked a, a, Good question. At the moment, I took it, I took offense to it because whenever I'm eating food, I eat one food at a time. So if I've got green beans, mashed potatoes, pot roast, uh, carrots and, and potatoes, well, I'm going to eat the pot. I'm going to eat my roast first and then I'll eat my carrots and then I'll eat my potatoes and then I'll eat my green beans and then I'll eat my mashed potatoes. Or, you know, in some form, fashion, I don't go off and take a bite of mashed potato, then a bite of, uh, of, I've got two different, I just realized I had two different types of potatoes on there. But anyhow, got mashed potatoes, got green beans, got carrots. All right. So, you know, I'm not one that takes a bite of mashed potatoes and takes a bite of carrots and then takes a bite of green beans and then takes a bite. I don't do that. I'm, I've always just eaten one. And he sat there and he was like, well, why do you do that? Because that's how I do it. And I did take a slight offense to it because apparently he thought it was weird. And who knows? Maybe it was weird. I didn't think it was weird. That's how I've ate my food all in my whole life. It's not like I don't keep everything separated. You know, there doesn't have to be a quarter inch of space around all the food. No, I mean, my green beans and, and sitting right next to the mashed potatoes, I'm going to have some green beans that are covered in mashed potatoes. It doesn't bother me that way. I just eat my green beans first and then I'll eat my mashed potatoes or I'll eat my mashed potatoes before I eat my carrots. You know, it, it, and it didn't even really matter what the, what the order is because I don't hold any particular order. I just eat one food item at a time. I'm always eating my French fries first though. That's one thing I do. I love to have a warm French fry, but with him asking, I had to get around to kind of examining it. And I was like, well, I don't know. Didn't know that was weird. First off, didn't think that was anything different and got around causing me to realize that, oh, some people eat a little bit here and there and then I was mixing it around. I mean, I figured, heck, it's all going to get mixed up in the stomach anyhow. So who, who cares if you eat, you know, mix it up or if you don't mix it up, it's, it's all going to get mixed up anyhow. But again, that's how we, how we looked at stuff and 
the fact that he actually asked the question, now he was asking it just because me and him wound up not getting along at all. And actually, I didn't, <laughs> truth be told, I didn't get along with the family at all. And I uh, thank God I'm not a part of that, uh, that group. <laughs> but those are just my thoughts about it. So, and, but I did, I had, I, it kind of bothered me there at first. And that's because I, I have always eaten my food like that, but I never intentionally thought about why I do that and why I don't. It's just something that I've done. And that's just, that's still the reason that I give. It's just because that's how I like to eat it. I've had the time to process those questions. I have been able to get curious as to why I eat my my meat before I eat my mashed potatoes or I eat my mashed potatoes before I eat my green beans, you know, it, whatever it is. I, I allow that. So when you become, when you start focusing in and living and living your life intentionally, you'll start paying attention to what it is. Some of the weird things that you actually do. Some of the things you would deem yourself as being weird for doing. Not that anybody else will think it was weird. And even if they think it's weird, who cares? It doesn't bother you. We, but all you have to do is ask questions about what, about a different, the different thoughts that you're having. And when you start taking the time to, well, do I really think that me eating one piece, one type of food at a time is weird? No, I don't. I can actually ask those questions. I can ask my, myself to get deeper into the whys, the who's, the what's, the when's, the where's, and all those other questions that we ask. But the problem is, is so many times we don't ask those questions. We're just, eh, I don't care. I, I don't, I just, it's just how I am. And, and, and that you just let it go. But that's a great time that you could actually start having a better quest, a better sense of, of self, this better sense of your, of who you are. And get to know that other person. If that person asks, even if they're asking a question in a very demeaning and dickish way, you can always just go, well, why do you eat it all together? Why do you eat, you know, why do you eat three green beans at a time? Why don't you eat four green beans at a time? Or why don't you eat just one green bean at a time? Why does your sp uh, your spoon of, of mashed potatoes have to be certain heights? Because I see you knock some off from time to time. Why do you have to do that? You know, or why, what is it about fat that you don't like or do like what, you know, we have, we can ask all these questions. We could be curious and ask from a place of honesty and be truly curious about something. And it won't be something that can be taken that would be taken offense because when, if we, now if we ask it in a very snotty way, then yeah, people are going to take offense to it. It's like, well, why do you eat all eat? Why do you only eat your food one at a time? Because I knew it's going to annoy you jerk off. And so, you know, we could have our, we could have a, a snarky response and those snarky responses to those snarky questions are going to kill any type of communication, any type of connection that we could, we could actually be opening ourselves up to. But being curious is wonderful. And it's wonderful for several reasons. One, it allows you to become more childlike and to look through life with a sense of wonder. One of the most important parts, one of the greatest, most joyous parts is to watch kids have that sense of wonder. And you, yeah, we're adults. We've seen a thing or two. We've, we've seen a thing or two when we know a thing or two, because, well, we've done it. We've, we've done the stupid stuff. We've done the, the brilliant stuff. And so we just kind of, we get a little bit jaded, really. We become a little bit, uh, you know, a little, eh, when it comes to our, our, our lives. And so. Allow yourself to become childlike in your curiosity. It's not meaning that you're becoming immature, but look at how children ask questions. They ask questions fearlessly. They don't give a rat's patootie whether they offend you with the question or not. They want to know the answer. And so they have this ferocious curiosity about them. And I find it fascinating to watch kids ask questions. And sadly, the moms and dads, they're the ones who start having all the 
problems with it. And they shut the kid down from ha- asking those questions. And what would happen to that child if he was able to continually have such a ferocious curiosity about life and about those around him and to really get to know? That would just be amazing in my books. To sit there and watch a child walk up to somebody who is handicapped. Maybe they lost a, as, as a veteran who lost a leg and has a hook for a hand on, uh, and, and, you know, is, is looking rough in the, in the whole part. And the little kid goes up to him and asks him, so what happened to you? Oh my gosh. You know, think of all the parents are going, oh, just all of a sudden going, oh, you know, they're freaking out going, you don't ask people that. Who says who? Who says you don't ask people that? What if you did ask people that particular question? What would happen? Maybe he has a story and a fascinating story and a story that would impact your child in a very positive way. Maybe it would give that soldier the wherewithal to see that he's got a purpose all because the child innocently but ferociously asked the questions that he had on his mind. Another great thing about being curious is you become, you're able to start understanding yourself better. And when you allow yourself to become curious, you're going to focus in on why you do stuff and you're going to see, Hey, this is one reason why I do this. This is a reason why I'm going to stop doing this. And you can actually start making very conscious decisions about what you do and what you don't do. Instead of just floating through life, wondering, you know, why does this always happen to me? Well, it happens to you. The the bad luck that comes to you happens because you're not paying attention to what's going on. Life is trying to tell you, wake the hell up. Being curious also allows you to have deeper connections with those people around you. You have a connection with your wife. You have a deeper connection with your wife when you become curious about her. Just notice today something that was really fascinating that my wife does with ice cream sandwiches. Never noticed that before. But she eats the cookie, you know, the little, the, the bread, I'm going to call the quote unquote bread, the chocolate, uh, cookie part of a, of a uh, of an ice cream sandwich first. So she'll bite off the, uh, the chocolate around it and she'll get down a little ways and then she'll just, she'll lick the ice cream until it's worn down to the, uh, to the, the cookie again. And then she'll eat some more cookie off and then she'll lick some more ice cream. Fascinating. Most cutest, the, the cutest way I've ever seen anybody eat a, an ice cream sandwich. And it allowed me to love her even more for the sheer fact that she has this beautiful little quirk about eating her ice cream sandwich. It doesn't mean anything to me. It's just, it's a fascinating deal. It's just so lovely to watch her just sit there. And we were sitting there talking and she just, she would eat off a piece of the cookie and eat a piece of the cookie on the other side. And then she'd sit there and lick the ice cream until the ice cream was down. And then she would do it, go rinse and repeat until she had eaten the whole ice cream sandwich. And Alice got me wondering, it's like, I wonder what she would do with a Klondike bar. Would she just sit there and would she lick the outside of the Klondike bar until she got all the chocolate wore off? Or would she take a bite and then eat all the chocolate chunks off and then go to the ice cream? You know, it's fascinating. Just the curiosity. I want to buy her a, a Klondike bar just to see how she eats a Klondike bar now. But this gives you a better insight to those people around you. And so you get these wonderful instances of surprise and wonder and and a deeper more meaningful connection with those around you so what would it be like if your if you started becoming curious about your kids what they're not just what they're doing and how you know what school's going on what's happening in school but be truly curious about your kids now it's been a while since you were truly curious about your kids so they will have their own thoughts about, oh my God, dad, why is dad spending so much time with me? And that's fine. They're allowed to have their thoughts. You can't keep them from having their own thoughts, but you can still 
be a part of their life and be such so intently curious about why they do what they do, where they where they go, you know, and get to know about them. And what do you do when you're curious? You ask questions. You want to have a great connection with your with your son, with your daughter. Ask them questions. Let them answer. Let them be the expert in your life about whatever. Give them a chance. You don't have to know everything. Stop trying to act like you know everything. That will allow your curiosity to bloom even more. When you can be curious, you find that you have more in common with those people around you. So when you become more curious about your children, you'll find that your children have more in common with you than you originally thought because we're, and they're sadly going to realize, Oh, I got a lot more in common with my dad than I thought I did. And yeah, that's going to ir- irritate them a little bit, which is fine because that's what we do as parents. That's our job is to irritate our teenagers until they, and, and, and show them, you know, relentless, uh, uh, jokes uh, and stuff as they, uh, as they are growing up. So they see the, you know, life is, is fun and they will be able to take a joke, (laughs) you know, and this brings, when you're curious, this brings that spark back into your life that you have been missing. That spark that draws your wife's attention to you, that spark that draws your boss boss's attention to you draw the spark that draws your friends closer to you because you're curious about what's going on about what's happening around you why things are the way they are and you come to these answers and you become the expert and when you're curious about why something's happened don't stop just with that keep going but i want to ask you what if you allowed yourself to get curious again what would you do Think about that for a second. Look at it. Really kind of contemplate that a bit. What would you do? First, you would be, you'd start for being able to tap into all those important aspects that curiosity brings. Everything that I just told you about, about the importance of being curious allows you to tap into those things, which opens door upon door upon door of possibilities. And you can actually consciously, intentionally choose which door you want to go through first. And after you've gone through that door a little bit, all right, well, we're done exploring around here. Let's go check out the next door. And you can keep exploring door after door after door after door. And you can keep learning and growing and staying curious. And it's uh, it's tough. I'll, I'll, I'm not going to lie to you. It's tough to get back into the habit of being curious. We have let ourselves down we've taken the reactions our parents had to our curiosity and all of them asking well, stop with the whys you know why ask well you know and they they give us all this hard time about the, all the questions that we ask but the funny thing is is that if we they had stopped shutting us down well do we have still had the curiosity now that we did back then if society didn't didn't curtail the curiosity of our kids, would they still be hungry for knowledge? Or do still at around age five, when all of a sudden learning becomes mandatory instead of fun, does it still just die then, just a little later in life? I don't know. That's something to be curious about, though. <laughs> what would happen if you l- ferociously defended your children's ferocious curiosity? Something else that you'll find out about when you start becoming allowing yourself to be curious is that your curiosity knows no bounds. You could be curious about the things that you're being curious about. You can also become so inception-like so that you can have curiosity about the thing you're curious about that's actually got a little aspect that you're really curious about, and you keep working yourself down. You go seven, eight, nine, ten layers deep. You can be as curious about everything that you want to be curious about. So what would it ha- what would happen if you became curious about what you do at work? Like, what? Well, why would I be curious about that? I mean, it- what if you were? curious about what you do at work. Well, I don't need to be curious, but what if you were? 
Think about that. Contemplate it. Turn it around in your head. What if you were curious at your work? My work, my coaching business, that's one of the great things. It allows me to be curious. It demands that I am curious because if I'm not curious, I'm not helping you. I'm wanting to help you see what curiosity does. When you can start becoming curious about your own actions, you start opening doors up up to possibilities you never even contemplated possible. How would your friends show up? How would your friends change if you were truly curious about the, what they are, what they are, are are doing and what they're about? How about your wife? What if you got curious about your wife again? Even if she is wanting a divorce, what would she be curious about? What about her would spark your curiosity? And again, there's so many different facets about this. It's just an amazing, fascinating thought thought study to do. I can guarantee you'd find wonder in sex again. To have that ability to, like you were a brand new lover to her, and you willingly and excitedly explored her body. And if she was had the curiosity of uh, also, it would, she would want to explore your body. You might find that passion again, but also you would allow you to find out what she's actually passionate about. Maybe she's got a passion. Maybe she likes beekeeping. Maybe she's always wanted to start a garden, but wasn't sure on where to start. Maybe that's something that you could help her out with. All because you got curious about what it is she does. And then again, what would happen if you got curious about your kids? How would your kids react if you all of a sudden started showing some real interest in them? Would they be as standoffish as they are now? Well, yeah, when you first start. If you were to start tomorrow and you've had your teenage son who just grunts at you from time to time, you know, hey, are you hungry? Uh, and heads upstairs. If you started becoming curious to your son, your son I bet you dollars donuts to start becoming curious about you. He would start opening up more to you because you show interest in him. I know that whenever I was growing up, I think my parents, I, I thought for, for sure my parents forgot about me half the time, which is probably one of the reasons why I was such a troublemaker back then. I wanted to know I could make a difference in my, in my, parents' lives? I, did I have an impact on their lives? I, that's a question to ask. You know, Curious about your kids. Do you think they would respect your thoughts more if you were curious about theirs? And it's interesting because kids who have parents that are fully engaged in their lives are far less likely to do drugs, start taking up smoking, taking up vaping, start you know, exploring sex way too soon, especially daughters. If you dad, this is some place where dads are insanely important. This is places that dads are incredibly important to their daughters. When you show them interest and you fully, you're not just there to parent them. You're mentoring them. You're being there and being intently curious about their lives. They're less likely to have a guy come along and go, hey, what are you up to? And and get get into bed with them because girls get into bed with with boys because they're looking for the masculine energy that dad did not provide for them. And they're getting it the wrong way. Now, I know I just I'm sure I've got a couple of feminists who are listening to that going, oh, he's talking about rape and daughter. No. No, I'm not talking about anything like that. The masculine influence that you have on your daughter. When you are curious about her and talking to her and asking her questions and truly showing interest in what who she is, what she wants to become, why she's doing that, and allowing her to actually ask you honest questions back and you answer them, and you ask her questions and she answers those. She's not going to try to get the masculine influence from, from, you know, Bart the jock 
you know, uh-huh. he's he's not going to matter. He can try all he wants, and she's just going to be like, whatever, dude, get a life, and carry on. Yeah, she may still end up catching a lot of flack, and that's something that where she, again, would turn to you so that she can pour the negative energy that she has developed into you so that you can provide positive energy for her. And that is all because you got curious about your daughter. Now, what would happen if you started actually getting curious about yourself? Now, there's a big old another change, huh? What if you started looking at yourself and asking, why do you look at porn? Why do you actually drink alcohol? You get home from work. You, you sit down. You've got a 12-pack of beer. And before you go to bed, that 12th can is gone. Why? Why do you drink alcohol every night? And that answer, adds, get curious about that. Do you really think that's the reason so that you, quote, unquote, relax? What would happen if you didn't drink alcohol that night? What would happen if you didn't watch porn ever again? I can tell you a lot would happen if you stopped looking at porn. I'm surprised at how much my life has changed. I haven't looked at porn in, well, intentionally looked at porn in seven, eight months now. And there's a, I still have a lot of thoughts that I, I fight against. But the urge to go off whenever I'm bored and look at porn, a lot, lot lower. And the times that... I have tripped over a a a porn video while going looking through Reddit or whatever. It's like, oh, good God! And it does nothing for me. And I, I mean, it's on, it's off. It's just that fast. It's, it shows up, gets closed, and I carry on my life. I'm not like, ooh, I wonder what and it's obsess about it. It's amazing what happens when you get off of porn. Amazing what do you look, how you show up to your in your family when you have stopped playing the victim and stopped looking at porn when you stop drinking alcohol for the sake of just drinking alcohol I, you think you got to just have it no actually you don't i'm not saying you're an alcoholic because actually you know addictions there's no really such no such thing as an addiction there is not there's no chemical in the world that goes, oh, hey, look, he's got the chemical, he's got the addiction chemical in his body. No, there's nothing like that. It's a, just a means of coping with disconnect in our lives. Maybe you would actually start being able to look through your life and see, why do you actually say one thing and then do the complete opposite? Why did it take you seven months to actually fix a toilet? These are questions you could actually be asking yourself and you could start becoming, come to an understanding as to why those questions ring like they do. When you pay attention to what you do and you get curious as to why you do what you do, you find out that you have a lot more insight into why you haven't accomplished those things you want to accomplish. You start at being able to self-coach and that's when life gets really interesting. So how do you get curious about anything? Well, first off, you've got to be intentional. You have to know and practice being curious and paying attention to the thoughts you have. If you start noticing that you've got really judgy thoughts, ask yourself. Why? Ask yourself. Just be curious about yourself. Don't worry about anybody else. Just be curious about yourself. Why did I have that thought? Somebody does something and you get angry about it. You know, maybe, uh, maybe you saw, um, oh, what's happening these days? Uh, no, I mean, you see somebody do something, say, uh, you saw a kid who just, who back talked his parents. That always, that always gets me, shifts me into, into red line real quick. I, I want to run over there and smack the kid and go, listen, you don't talk to your parents like that. You know? <laughs> and that's just me running through in a very unintentional mindset at the moment. But whenever I see a kid, you know, talking very disrespectfully to any adult, I want to walk up behind him, grab, grab him by those short hairs on the back of his neck and just lift up and go, what did you say 
tell your mom, you know, I want to just jump back into the 60s and 70s and 80s parenting style because those were one insanely effective parenting style. And I think we need to continue parenting like that, but we've got too many parents who are now all stuck in their heads and all, and it's just, Oh, oh but I don't want to hurt Bobby's feelings. I'm trying to be his best friend because he doesn't have a dad no more. Well, it's probably because your fault, <laughs> you know, but you can start by why did you react so angrily? to that. I've got other issues that I, I come across. And whenever I hear po- people on podcast start talking about those particular issues, oh boy, that really gets my goat. And I'm just, arr, arr, arr. and I still have to turn everything off, sit back and go, well, why do you think that? Why is this such an issue? And pay attention to what the responses are. Pay attention to what those thoughts you're having are. But you start out with those six simple questions of who, what, when, where, why, and how. Why am I feeling that way? When did this come become a problem? What am I going to do about this? What is it that really pisses me off? It's not that word. So why am I getting angry at that? How can I change this? How is this affecting my life? How, you know, we can ask all six of these questions over and over and over and over and over again, and we can get deeper and deeper and deeper into our life. And we become more curious as to why we do stuff. And when we do, we grow and we become better men and we become more understanding to those people around us. We can actually stop and look and see someone watch those Karens completely losing their mind because a kid walked across the corner of their, their, their lawn and they just come out there just screaming at the top of their head, just haranguing this poor kid. And you can step back and go, wow, to be that Desperate for power has got to be incredibly sad. It's got to be terribly frustrating to be in that type of head. How could I help her? Can I help her? Is she just completely, totally fruitcake crazy? Or is she just someone who is lost in their emotions? These are questions you could ask. These are questions that could help you become more understanding to those people around you help you become the rock that your kids are going to need as you go through this divorce to be the rock for your wife that maybe she actually goes, you know what? You're actually the guy that I was looking for. You came home. Finally, that's why I was wanting to go out and date. That's why I was wanting a divorce because I didn't think you were ever coming home. When you get curious you can open up and start having those types of conversations. Those types of conversations are the ones that will allow you to become the better man, become the stronger man, become the man you're, you're, you need in your life, your family needs in your life, and your society needs in your life. If you want help with any of this, I suggest you take the next step. That next step is if you go to Take that next step and find the link on the show notes. You can go to relaxedmail.com forward slash 186. And there at the bottom is the next step. That next step is if you're struggling with your thoughts, struggling with your limitations, struggling to actually get curious. Maybe you're feeling the world's just crumbling around you and you're trying to figure out how do I stand up? How do I hold all this together? Where do I even start with any of this? Well, you start by taking that next step. And what that next step is, is getting coached. Get yourself coached through your divorce. Get yourself coached through whatever part of your life is just giving you the fits, man. Getting coached by me, we can together, we can change that that line of thinking that you're having. Change how you see 
the world and start seeing it with a new pair of eyes and a set of eyes that looks at the world with wonder, looks at your children and they can be as angry as they want to be with you. And you're like, God bless you. I love you anyhow. You can look at your wife. You could even actually, by the time we got to get done with this, if you wanted to go to your wife's next wedding and as she is going down the the aisle to get hitched to her her new man, you could actually wish her good luck. What? what? You know what? No, I can't do you could. It's all a choice, man. It's all a choice. And I would suggest the next step to helping you become the better man is to go off and let's get some coaching. Let's take a one year coaching package and go through it and work through all the scenarios that's come across all the different weird thoughts, the patterns that you find yourself having all of a sudden you can start addressing, you can start looking at them. You can start trying out new things. If that's what interests you, you can go to relaxmail.com forward slash coaching and take that next step. So guys with that, I want to thank you very much for listening. If anything that I said this on this episode resonated with you, Please share it out onto Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Threads. Hey, we're on Threads also. Yes, we are. On, we're on all the Threads, and I am more than happy to come out and ha- talk with you. Share it out. Let the folks in your following know that there is this podcast out there called the Relaxed Male, and we're changing the lives of men. We're changing the thoughts of men, and to do that. We've got to have more men come around and hear what is being said. So, man, thank you again for listening. Take care. Have a great and wonderful life. And I'll see you next week. Till then, bye.